Last time, we took down the insect, uh, quadro, four insect guys. We took them all down, and we got our fifth locator card, which means we just need the one more, and we can enter the, uh, final round of the Battle City Tournament. But before we do that, uh, I've gone ahead and I've faced all the duelists here, except for the one... Uh, here with the afro. Huh? What is it? What do you want? Don't bug me if you don't want anything. Duel? So you're a duelist too. I'd accept your challenge, but on one condition. Bring me useful information then. We'll duel. I'm looking for a duelist, a guy named Yugi. Do you know where he is? Yeah. What? He often shows up at the toy shop? Hmm. That's a good lead. Fine. We duel. So, I, uh, like I said, I took on a bunch of different duelists lists in between episodes. Um, I also got a bunch of new cards, and I've gotten up to the point where I feel like I'm pretty powerful. Um, I need to level up my deck capacity a tiny bit, and I'll be extremely possible, but, or possible, powerful. But one of those cards that I just got that's really strong is uh, Toadmaster here. Toadmaster, or I think... Frog the Jam is infamous uh, just because they made a lot of frog decks or toad decks in uh, later on in Yu-Gi-Oh! and they have to specifically mention that they don't mean Frog the Jam or Toadmaster <laughs> when they say frog or toad as an archetype, which I always thought was really fucking stupid. Uh, but yeah, Toadmaster is one of the cool cards that lets you summon another card that you don't need to have in your deck. Uh, Frog of the Jam is an alright card, and Toadmaster has a thousand attacks, so that's pretty good. And then we also got Doran here. We managed to get in, uh, snag another Doran's here, so we got two of them. So we're doing pretty good for ourselves. Um, I also got a new super strong card, which we're gonna go ahead and uh, see in quite a bit, I hope. Um, it's funny, there's this series, it's called, uh, well, there's another card game called Card Fight. Or I believe it's called Vanguard. Hmm. I know the the anime itself is called Card Fight Vanguard, but I don't know what the playing card game is called. To be honest, I'm pretty sure it's just Vanguard. Uh, but anyways, it's a similar it's a series similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, and it has the same sort of premises of it's kids playing a card game, and the entire world revolves around said card game. Uh, but it's sort of um. Unlike Duel Masters, that also came out recently, which was also a dueling show, or card-based, or TCG, or, uh, yeah, TCG-based show. Uh, the difference is, is that they were sort of a lot more, um, how you say, uh, in with the times, or I think the word is, uh, there's a specific word for it, ugh, defeated. But that match was a good way to loosen up. I'm going to beat Yugi and establish my name here. I've got to hurry and find him. Oh yes, I should share some of my knowledge. My Valentine is said to be the best female duelist. Well, I saw her by the building. If you hurry, you may be able to challenge her. Anyways, I'm off to the toy shop. I don't know what the fuck she mean. What the fuck he means by building? Cause honestly, there's plenty of buildings around here. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, I believe the word is disc disconstruction of the card game uh, genre, which is an odd term to say because there's really not that many card game anime or series that I can really think of. Maybe there's a lot of like manga, maybe, uh, but in terms of series, aside from the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise, there's only really the Duel Masters franchise, which I don't think it did too well, and then there's Card Fight, which actually did pretty decently. Um, but it did a lot of things differently. So the main character, he's not the greatest in the world. Uh, that's one of the main differences, for example. He loses all the times. Or not all the time, but he loses quite a lot of times. They have um, a varied cast that are somewhat <laughs> pretty good. It's not like in the most of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series where it's kind of just Yugi's really good and then maybe y Yugi and, I'm uh, sorry, maybe Joey and Kaiba. They kind of make everyone else seem kind of decent, right? Uh, they have a good female lead. Uh, they even have a younger kid who's in like elementary school or something like that. He's, you know, I guess representative of a younger demographic, which is pretty good. Um, I don't know what building this guy was talking about, but I'm gonna go ahead and save here. Yes. 
Um, but yeah, they did a lot of things differently from a lot of other card game series. Uh, one of the other things I don't like that they did, however, is sort of the problem with all card games is that they are constantly recycling, or not recycling, they're constantly redoing sort of the opponent, the uh, characters, main cards. So the protagonist has this card which was called, I shit you not, like Buster Blader? Or it's the opposite of what the actual card is in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because in Yu-Gi-Oh! it's Buster Blader, but this guy is like... Blader Buster? Or like, it's a really shitty... <laughs> it's so close to Buster Blader that it's ridiculous, right? That's like his trump card for throughout the series. But uh, he doesn't get to like use it. Or, yeah, because, like, someone takes it from him, some stupid shit. Uh, and until, like, he's worthy. But then he gets progressively more and more and more trump cards throughout while the series advances. And, like, I get that it shows some kind of growth within the character, but at the same time, it's kind of like... Yeah, I know you're just trying to sell cards, and it kind of sucks that, you know, the ace monster is replaced, like, every other episode. The only reason I'm saying that is because my ace monster just got replaced. That's what this whole seven-minute long uh rant was all about but anyways we got some punk here all the duelists around here are defeated you too shall join the vanquished so we got a rare hunter here uh whose name i believe is just rare hunter we got here crazy shadowy field fall prey to us he's gonna play queen's double in attack mode Real threatening. Uh, gonna play Neko Gal, play two, three cards face down and attack your monster. Pretty sure this boosts, uh, like, well, no, it doesn't boost dark, huh. Yeah, so it's, I guess the fields are only effective on their type, not their attribute. Uh, so it probably boosts zombies and fiends, or not even fiends, because fiends is an actual uh, attribute. So I don't really know the typings in this game all that well. I'm gonna get an activate Monster Reborn to bring back whatever monster that was. Sacrifice your monster in order to summon Mythical Sand. And I'm also gonna activate Muyan Courage to recover my life from by 200. And then attack you directly for a whopping 3,000 something attack, uh, life points. And you're just gonna play a card and face down. And I'm gonna play a Queen's Double and then recover my life points even more using Soul of Pure, who I only have in my deck because she looks kind of cool. And I guess also she can get it, which is the theme of this deck. Go, ladies! Fuck him up! Let's see what else we got. Uh, I'm trying to think if Joey. No, it wasn't Joey. It was Yugi who faced him. If he got a rare card. If he got a. Sorry, not a rare card. He did get a rare card. He got red eyes from him, uh, facing this rare hunter. But I don't remember if he got a locator card from him. Uh huh. I don't really remember locator cards too well. Oh, cool. Your Golem of the Moving Fortress. Nice. This is a not really useful card for this game because I'm not going to be playing in the defense mode very often. But it, it can't be. Lose to you? How could this happen? Ugh, don't forget this. So, yeah. That was a little diversion there. Got rid of the Rare Hunter. Uh, you took out the ghouls? That's macabre, you. What? I must get back to the cemetery. You have my thanks. I wonder if that means if I can go back and duel him now? The darkness here. It reassures me. Duel? Bones, the undead. She'll duel forever. Cool. So I can duel Bones again. I guess we'll do this. Um, got, this is supposed to be a bit of a longer episode because there's a couple of things I wanted to get done in this video. Oh, cool. Two of the greatest new cards that I have in my deck. These cards are really strong in this game. Uh, Mammoth Graveyard has a great effect that just powers down all monsters on your opponent's field one stage. And also, last time I said that uh, a stage is uh, sort of a multiplier, it's not a set number, that was bullshit. It's a set number. It's <laughs> it's 500. Maybe I'm thinking of the next game that's a different number, but no. Here, a stage is just 500. So it powers down all monsters 500. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and summon this legendary fiend. Legendary Fiend has been activated. Legendary Fiend will power up. So now he has 2,000 attack. And then during my turn, I think I can activate the effect again. No? 
Hmm. Must be in the next game. Uh, cause there's a game where you have legendary feeling on the field and he just, his effect just keeps activating. <laughs> I know in like normal Yu-Gi-Oh that's what he does, but in one of these games, I remember his effect, the that effect text constantly popping up and me constantly using him, uh, but it's not really working out right now. So I'll probably get rid of him, which is a bit of a letdown, but let's go ahead and use Nami Graveyard's effect. We'll lower all of the... <coughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. We'll lower all the attack and defense of all the monsters on the field of my opponent's side of the field. Which is uh, quite a lot, quite honestly. It's a very strong effect. There's also another card that has a very similar effect. Um... What is it called? Uh, instead of Shadow Spell, the Trap card, they have Shadow Spell, the Magic card, which does the same thing. Oh wow, he didn't even try and attack. So it's possible his monster was actually of a type weaker to my, uh, what do you call it, uh, Unhappy Maiden that he didn't attack or anything. His AI is just smart enough to notice I have a shit ton of face down cards and a bunch of strong monsters in attack mode. So, anyways, uh, we beat a Bones and we're gonna get Clown Zombie. We got Crass Clown before, and now we got Clown Zombie, which is not bad. But the Untim Time, I have fallen. Truly, you are strong. Cool. Pretty sure we can beat a Bones a couple of times. Uh, I ended up challenging. What is his name? Weevil a couple of times. You duel him like three times in a row. He tells you that. Uh, he tells you sort of a bit of a, some plot stuff. He tells you that. Kaiba organized this tournament specifically so that he can get legendary cards, and he's like, you should go get those legendary cards, which was, you know, interesting that they actually put that in there. Uh, let's see, what can I add? Can I add this? No. Can I add the mystical stand? No. Can I add moon envy? No. Uh, I can't use this yet. Um, hmm. Monstrous bird? No. Man. Um, another, nope. A little less than that. Um, I guess I'll add this guy. Can't even do that. Oh, well, balls. I need to add one of these shitty cards then. Um, hmm. Can't say I really want to add any of these cards, quite honestly. I'm trying to reduce the amount of junk that I put in my deck, uh, quite honestly, but I guess when in doubt, just throw in. Swordsman from a Forbidden Land. Uh, there's one last thing I wanted to do here. We got here this guard here. Hey, it's off limits here. Get lost. Duel, huh? Looks like you got some decent cards, too. Well, whatever. Wow, that guy gave us fucking 50,000 domino and 30 deck capacity. I just skipped through it because aside from the fact that I fucked up and accidentally sacrificed Toad or Toadmaster, I uh, did, didn't feel like he was really doing much. Honestly, it was a pretty whatever duel. And he's not really an important duelist, but hey, he gave us a shit ton of shit. And Sword Stalker, which isn't half bad. My rare card! What a disgusting outcome! Not bad, actually. Uh, Sword Stalker probably is a little bit better than. What is it that I have to add? Uh, Forbidden Swordsman guy. Where is he? Forbidden Swordsman from a foreign land. There we go. Saw my new uh, <laughs> my new card there, but hopefully I'll actually show it uh, in battle next time. Can I add this? No, I can only add like a hundred. Yeah, yeah, a little less than a hundred. Uh, all right, so let's. Whoops, don't want to do that. Uh, I just want to see the details. So we're up to seventy-two. Yes, yeah, so I can add Sword Soccer. I can also add, let's see, what's the highest number card, or the highest powerful card I can add to my deck? I can put back Sword Armor Dragon, uh, I can't add this because it's over by 10. Can I put on Sword Armor Dragon? No, I can't because of by 2. Alright, so then yeah, we'll just add Sword Soccer. Anyways, finally, we make it here to Kaiba Mokuba. Huh? What do you want? Right. What good is our security staff? Ah, whatever. A duelist, are you? See this? It's a duel simulator. My brother made it, and I'm testing it. Try dueling against it. Remember, it was made for my brother. You better be good and ready for it. This is one of the things in the uh, sequel of this game where it just fucking destroys you. Because you go out and you duel it, and it's like, oh, it should be like, you know, 
in Sacred Cards where it was kind of a pushover. Nah, it comes out right away with like Voice Reader and Gemini Elves and shit like that. While you're over here with your shitty Dharma Cannons and other bullshit. Not me, Duel the Machine. <laughs> Data upload complete, Duel start. Let's go ahead and duel this damn machine, see what we can get out of this. It's my turn, yeah. This is my new trump card here, which is Black Skull Dragon. Normally a fusion type, or I keep saying fusion type. You know, normally a fusion card, it's actually a uh, high level monster here. I need three um, tributes in order to just get her on the field. Gonna put a card face down. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and summon this guy and attack your monster. Cool. And then I'm gonna attack you with this. And then I'm gonna activate Pot of Greed to hopefully get a trap card, which I do not. So I'll play a card face down and end my turn. You have to play a card face down or else you don't end up drawing a card if you have a full hand, which is really silly. Uh, I'll play Infinite Dismissal. Then I'll activate Monster Reborn to bring back one of your monsters. Then I'll go ahead and summon my Skull Angel, uses effect to draw one card. Oh man. <laughs> and then just attack you. Oh boy, this is gonna be crazy. Okay, you're gonna try and do nothing. Alright, that works. Uh, so then I'm just gonna tribute all three of my monsters and I'll summon Black Skull Dragon. And then get rid of your fucking Petite Dragon. And you're gonna activate Red Medicine, which is whatever. Play a defense down monster. I'm then going to just play a face down card. Use the effect of my Hourglass of Life to power Black Skull Dragon to 3700 attack points. But wait, that's not all. Uh, oh, I guess, no, nah, it doesn't matter. I'll just use it. I'll use the effect of another Hourglass of Life to boost my monster's attack to 42,000. Eat my ass, you fucking computer. I almost sacrificed my 4,000 attack point monster. I really hate the way that uh, whenever I play a card, how it moves over in this game, because I'm always going to like sacrifice that because I'm like, finish off with 4,000 attack. Sweet. Uh, the great thing about, about Black Skull Dragon is that the he's only... Uh, cost of five so that's really good uh, later on in the next game they change it they make tribute monsters worth a little bit more uh, 5,000 domino and battle ox hell yeah uh, I believe he has an effect actually that powers up uh, beast warrior and warrior and type monsters and etc it sucks because the actual text says etc it doesn't tell you exactly what it does your victory has been confirmed how's that you appear to be relatively skilled at this the machines need a bit more adjusting I just burped a bunch of times in my mouth. That was gross. Stay fresh. 